Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Scott Grohlke. Serving with me is Pastor Melly Momo. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. We're celebrating today the birth of Abigail Faith Bullion. Born to parents Scott and Kristen. And we also want to congratulate big brother Connor and also big sisters Emily and Vivian. Congratulations to you. We also... Uh, want to uh, remind the congregation that our 11 o'clock service will be returning on June 27th. It's been a long time. Today we reflect on our ministry and broadcasting the word that is Jesus Christ. This week our specific focus, streaming waters, as we sow acts of kindness in this community. We'll be praying for those leaders and servants a little bit later this morning. Let's move into a time of worship. God is good all the time. Please stand for the call to worship. God is the sower. God is the lover. We are the beloved. God is the healer. We are the healed. Gold is the potter, we are the clay. Come to worship and pray. Great sower, cast us like seeds upon the winds of your mercy, that we may grow in fertile ground. Keep us from stony paths where we eat of life's case and strife with strife. Protect us from the stony pathway where the snares of worry and fear may choke the opportunity for growth. Nurture us in the rich soil of your kingdom that we may stretch into the sunshine and the rain of your grace. In Christ, amen. Please remain standing. Please remain standing for the opening hymn.
Sorry, you caught me at a really hectic time. I've been frantically packing for our church's youth group mission trip. <gasps> I have room for more. trip is and what we do while we're there. Well, our trips are usually short and they last about a week. We travel to different places throughout the United States, but this year we are staying closer to home and we are traveling down to Southern Illinois. The main reason of a mission trip is to help others in need and in your travels spread the gospel word to those who will listen. So while we're on a mission trip, we do take one day to take a vacation. This reminds me of how the disciples would travel from town to town, spreading the good word of God. Sometimes they would go without sleeping or without eating. This made them very tired. Our Bible verse comes from Mark chapter 6, verse 31. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a quiet place and take rest for a time. See, Jesus knows that we need to take a vacation every now and then, and then to renew our bodies. But this is important to always leave enough room in your suitcase to pack Jesus in and take him along. Let's pray. I pray you all have safe travels if you are planning to vacation this summer. I hope you enjoy this beautiful weather we are having. Don't forget to keep Jesus in your heart on your travels. Having him with you makes your trip even more enjoyable. In your name we pray, oh Lord, amen. Well guys, I hope you have a fantastic summer. Oh and hey, Mr. Olson, I promise I won't bring all of my bags. See you guys next month, bye. We move into a time of prayer. You have perhaps noticed in the bulletin there are a number of concerns and joys. I invite you into it in attitude of prayer. Almighty God, we gather to pray for ourselves. And for the broken, for the lonely, the grieving. We pray for the family of Ella May Wadil in her passing to eternal life. We also gather to celebrate the birth of Abigail Faith Bullion into this life. In the pattern of St. Francis of Assisi, Today we pray to be sowers of your grace and peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow seeds of love. Where there's injury, seeds of pardon. Where there's doubt, seeds of faith. Where there's despair, seeds of hope. Where there's darkness, seeds of light. Where there's Sadness, seeds of joy. May our lives be used by you to broadcast the good news of Jesus into the lives of others so that, so that they will find your nourishing word and power through him who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now, Lord, we we also ask for your blessing on the gifts that we have brought, that we might broadcast the seed that is the good news across the earth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lee. Our Old Testament reading is coming from Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path 
that sinners trade, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by the streams of water, which yield their fruits in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. Now please stand for the affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please remain standing for the gospel reading. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. After Jesus had began to teach beside the sea, such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat in the sea and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, and since it had no depth of soil, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into the good soil, and brought forth grain growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said to them, Let anyone with ears listen. When he was alone, moving then, those who were around him along with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything comes in parables in order that they may indeed look, but not proceed, perceive, may indeed listen, but not understand, that they may not turn against again and be forgiven. And he said to them, do, not, do you not understand this parable? And how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown when they, when it. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them, and these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy. But they have no root and endure only for a while. Then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on the ground, the good soil. They hear the word. They accept it and bear fruit, 30 and 60 and a hundredfold. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. May the word that is Christ, the living word, be planted within our souls, interpreted within our minds, acted out 
in the things we do. In Christ, amen. There once was a product tester for the Acme Widget Company. In a meeting with board executives, he was asked what kind of response they'd had to the new widget. He said the response has not been great. We did our normal random test. Some people tried our widget and they loved it. Others wanted no part of it. They, there were some who tested it and said it worked fine, but they, they wondered about the durability. Some who became bored with it, they worried the widget would just end up in the attic along with the what's it, the who's it, and the thingamabob. Only a small percentage of our test audience were completely satisfied, so the board discontinued production of the widget. Is it possible to come to a similar conclusion about ministry? Jesus Christ is the central purpose, the living product the world desperately needs. Bishop Frank Beard yesterday at annual conference said, the main thing we do is to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and make disciples. Keep the main thing the main thing. It's like Jesus' parable about a farmer. Now, just between me and you and a fence post, I'm the last one to talk about farming. My uh, knowledge of agriculture will be exhausted in about two minutes. My wife is the one who grew up on the farm. She's taught me most of what I know about farming. The good thing is that today's parable is designed for the agricultural simpleton, so I've figured it all out. The sower is the guy who plants the seeds. I picked up on that. Kathy and I planted our, one of our first gardens, a large garden, early in ministry. Within a couple of weeks, we recognized the backaching problems of weeds. This makes me hurt to think about it. By the time we moved to Oblong in 1991, we scaled back, we agreed on scaling back our vegetable garden. We bought a tomato plant at Ace Hardware. This was our garden. We grew it just outside the kitchen door. We set it in the soil, we fertilized it, then I watered it, then she watered it, then I watered it, then she watered it. It was a warm summer and lots of sunshine helped it out, and the, and the garden flourished until the plant was almost seven feet in height. The autumn and early winter were warm, and we had tomatoes past Thanksgiving. It's amazing how much energy you can, you can put in your garden when it's composed of one plant. If you've raised a crop, you understand how important is the soil. What's its composition? Is it fertile? Is it rich in nutrients? What's the moisture content? How's the drainage? Jesus told a story of a farmer broadcasting seed. Some seed fell in fertile places, some fell among the rocks. Some had no moisture, some of it was eaten by birds. Some took no root. Some landed in the right place at the right time, with the right sun, with the right rain, and it flourished. The message of Jesus is good news. It's a seed that needs to be broadcast everywhere. In Jesus' parable, the soil is not always receptive, productive. Sometimes it will produce, and sometimes it will produce a hundredfold. If the parable speaks to our mission, it's about sharing Jesus Christ. For 189 years, the Methodist Church of, a, of Macomb, which became the United Methodist Church of Macomb, has been broadcasting the good news. You've been distributing, you've been planting, you've been nourishing, you've been demonstrating the good news in what you say and what you do here and globally. You have come a long way since this congregation first worshipped in a log courthouse in 1832. Today you have this inspiring development on Calhoun Street on the 
south end of Western Illinois University, but, but more than the beauty of this sanctuary. You're part of God's holy temple. Your task to demonstrate the presence of Jesus Christ, the good news, in what you say and what you do. You make disciples when you plant seeds of faith. You plant seeds through adult, youth, children's ministry. You plant the seeds of compassion through the Good Samaritan Fund. You, you plant seeds through the outreach of Fellheimer Ministry. You plant seeds globally through the United Methodist Mission Connection. You plant seeds in the hearts of children through Vacation Bible School coming up very soon. This week, this week, you plant seeds in Macomb through the service of streaming waters. Today's soil has a new composition. It's a different world than it was 200 or 20 or even two years ago. To be successful in bringing out a yield, you, you need to modify your procedures. When the soil's infertile, you don't give up. Farmers don't give up. I've known too many of them. They're, they're resilient, a bit stubborn, but they're committed people of faith. Your mission begins when you broadcast the good news of Jesus Christ. What are your expectations in spreading good news? Here's some questions to ask yourself. Is my life saturated with the good news of Jesus Christ? If I don't get it, I don't have it to give. Am I growing to trust God intellectually, emotionally, spiritually? Am I willing to share the good news with my words and my actions? Is my mind open and receptive to all kinds of people that I might reach them? Is my spirit nourished in a significant class or study group? Are my hands open to deliver good news through service? Am I looking ahead for a future harvest? Do I use every tool that I have to plant in my neighborhood? Your actions and words in broadcasting the good news of Jesus will yield a harvest in the future. If you don't envision a harvest, it will determine its own shape, weeds and all, and you may not like what you find. Reverend Gary Livesey has been shaping the future by planting seeds of good news. Gary's completing his 32 years as chaplain of Chaddock in Quincy. His, his, his passion has been to broadcast the love of Jesus into the hearts and the minds of children and youth at Chaddock. In his retirement statement, he gave this invitation. Be open to the grace that is going to be offered to you. Be open to the fact that you're probably going to be planting a lot of seed and you're not going to see the fruit immediately. You're wanting some results. Stay patient, he says. You're going to see results and you're going to see them in the most surprising ways when you least expect them. In the parable of the sower, you're invited to broadcast the seed. The soil is not fertile in all places. The farmer still plants the seed. The yield will, will not always be high. The farmer plants the seed. Birds are going to eat some of the seed. Plant the seed. The sun will scorch some of the tender plants, plant the seed. Some seeds will produce a harvest, plant the seed. The seed of Jesus Christ is his life, his story, his message, his good news. People won't always respond to the good news. So what? Plant the seed. It's difficult to form genuine disciples of Jesus. Plant the seed. There's a lot of competition to serving God. 
plant the seed. You see where this is going? Some people would get disenchanted, disheartened, disgusted, and disengaged. Plant the seed. Pandemics will change your motives, your methods, your mission. Plant the seed. Everyone is not going to agree with your leadership. Plant the seed. Some people will leave and find another church. Plant the seed. Some people will give up on God. Go plant the seed and let God bring the harvest. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, chapter 3, verse 6, Paul writes, I planted the seed, Apollos watered the plants, but God gave you growth. It's not the one who plants or the one who waters is at the center of this process, but God who makes things grow. Plant the seed. You will deliver your product and find that some people will like it and when trouble comes, they will fall away. The soil is not always fertile. Plant the seed and let God bring the harvest. Reminds me of the story of an ordained pastor in the Church of England. He emigrated from England to, the, to colonial America in 1637. John was a brilliant scholar and had a bright future, but one year after coming to the American colonies, he died from tuberculosis. In his final bequest, he gave $1,000 and a collection of 200 books to develop a new college. John's death did not make the news, but the university called Harvard came from the educational seed that had been planted by John Harvard. The parable of the sower reminds you there will be failure. Just go plant the good news and wait on God. How do you begin? Plant the seed to grow your faith this summer. Plant, plant a seed by committing 10 minutes a day to read through the New Testament over the next three months. Plant a seed to increase your worship attendance. Plant a seed to approach a friend with a gentle, honest faith conversation. Plant a seed by telling a coworker, you're going to pick them up next Sunday and bring them to church. Plant a seed by serving others in Macomb through Streaming Waters Work Week. Now, I forgot my T-shirt this morning. My Streaming Waters T-shirt. Your job is to plant and let God do the rest. So as we conclude, move toward the conclusion of our time of worship, I want to invite all of those who are serving with streaming waters to please stand. All of these streaming water servants, please stand. Yeah, some of you didn't bring your t-shirts either. We'll get them tomorrow. As we, uh, no, I still need you to stand, sorry. I know. We're getting our exercise program in this morning. Some of what we do is streaming waters. We plant seeds by speaking. We plant seeds by doing. I want to pray for all of you who are part of streaming waters and for this congregation and for this community. Creator God, whose hands scattered the seeds of life across the universe, teach us to be faithful stewards as we broadcast the living word that is Jesus Christ. Bless our efforts and bless the efforts of these streaming water servants as we leave an impact on this community for Jesus Christ in what we do in addition to what we say. 
In Christ we pray. Amen. Now please, I invite all of you to stand as we sing our closing song with the praise band, Jesus Messiah. became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness he humbled himself and carried the cross love so
before I share this benediction, I remind those of you who are working with Streaming Waters, we have a brief orientation in just a couple moments in the atrium. Now I invite all of you to remember the story is not just about the farmer, it's about you planting seeds of the good news of Jesus with your life and words. So go forth and do that in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.